Don English. I was recently charged and attacked by a buffalo. I was basically born in the park. My dad was a ranger. Grew up here and married a game reserve girl whose dad was also a game ranger. Been here 31 years now. Buffalo bulls have always been my favorite animal, you know, and, and will always be. They're the old, what we call dugger boys. It, it's just an impressive animal. Buffalo's are the algemeen as groot tropdieren. Volwassen bulle is is allemaal of jong bulle of bulle wat in de beste conditie is. Maar voor zodra hij bul wil gaan uit word, en hulle word dan uit die trop uit gestoot. En hulle is vorm sy klein uh, groepies weg van die groot troppe af. Baie van die gedrag wat jy sien van die ou bulle is gewoonlik rond om water gaat waar hulle makkelijk kan kos en water kry, maar waar hulle ook makkelijker hulle self kan verdedig. Voor die algemeen het sikke ou bulle het uh, baie onvoorspelbare temperament. It was during the droughts and we were trying to get some of the buffalo out, the older bulls and that. And then there's also a sustainable use policy in the park. The volhoudbare gebruik van natuurlijke bronne in nationale parken. Skep geleentede waar ons wel met mense wat om die parke bly en ook vir hulle kan voordele geer uit die verskye hulbronne waar daar wel bestaan. As you know, if you're in conservation, you're conserving animals, but sometimes you have to kill to conserve. So none of us like doing it, and the older you get, the more difficult it gets. It's easier to do it from the helicopter. Charles Thompson was a pilot. We actually searched quite a while for some buffalo, and eventually we found them in an area that we thought was suitable that we could get vehicles into. Operation didn't go to plan as it was a bit of a harder operation with the animals that we were working with. So eventually we got onto the ground, and um, that's when the incident occurred. Found the three buffalo bulls shot from the air. They all went down. If you look at a buffalo galloping from the side, the way it runs, you know, the head moves about a meter like this, you know, as it's running. So you've got a good chance of messing up a headshot, so I always just go for that big vital area where the shoulder blades come together. Obviously it didn't break everything, but that's what it looked like from there. We landed and I went and did what is normal procedures and that's just to give an insurance shot to each one of them. I took a bit more time getting out the machine than normally because I was just waiting for the blades to stop. We got out the machine and we were far more relaxed than we would have normally been because um, the operation was over. I got out and I walked up to the buffalo. It was facing away from me. When I was about 20 meters from it, it jumped up and came for me. I knew I only had one shot because of the distance. You saw in the middle of the hoorings that you have a verbreeding in the hoorings. And that's what the owners call boss. That's a very strong bean structure that it understands. And that's natuurlijk the beschermming of the brain. And that's a very of the under ons is wat buffels in mekaar sal lees, sal hulle besef wees om, om koppen te stamp. Maar het is redelijk moeilik om te beweer een buffel dood te skiet dier die specifieke deel. So jy moet laar skiet. Waited for the buffalo to get to about 10 meters. They always come with their noses up at you like this and you normally shoot it on the tip of the nose to get up the sinuses for a brain shot. Which I did, I was sure of my shot. Buffalo just stumbled and uh, I knew you know, it's going to hit me. Daar kan complicaties gebeur as jy bijvoorbeeld die verkeerde type patrone gebruik, wat zachter is en wat nie met menig goeie deerdringsvermoe het nie. So I had ammunition which is not really suitable for a charging buffalo. It hasn't got a lot of penetration. I made a conscious decision to take the 10 rounds that I had and get rid of them, you know, because I didn't like them. I told Charles, it might not go as well as it should, but I just need to get rid of them. And there's two types of buffalo attacks really. It's the ones that get a fright, jump up and run you over and carry on running, you survive. But if a buffalo decides to, to, to kill you, you, know, you don't survive normally. I dived to the right. As I was falling, I saw the buffalo swipe at my legs and it missed me. But you can say that the is in 350 km per hour is what you can get on a short distance. So you can now think that you have a great mass, 600 to 800 kg, what, what, what a great buffalo bull can be. But as that mass is, for you to and I spoot, it had a very great impact, a great momentum. As I hit the ground, you know, I thought, hell, oh, that was lucky. And as I turned around, I just saw he was on top of me. I felt him hook his horns under me, so my legs would be in the loop of his horn. Instinctively pulled my legs up as he hooked. When lions attack a buffalo, the way that they throw something, they throw it straight up. Skulk sitting in the helicopter happened to look up at that moment. And suddenly, Don's two legs broke the skylight, then we realized there was a problem. Going up is a blank, hitting the ground is a blank, and then 
the next thing I realize he's on me again. Looking at that, Don was th thrown again into the sky. So his two legs broke the skyline again for the second time. Came down in exactly the same place, and then I felt his wound go under my back, and, and I knew that if he, if he hooks now, he'll hook my, put it through my back and out the front, and I, I spun around and his horn just ran along the side of me and cut me open, yeah, but didn't disembowel me. The verdediging of Buffalo's General Lewis gave you an idea of how strong the stark Buffalo was. A leeuw wifey, weeg in the omgeving of 120 kg, but great leeuw mannikies, they weeg in the omgeving of 180 to 200 kg. You're really strong if you're 200 kg around the way, it's a bit of a He threw me up again, but not quite as high. Came down exactly the same place. And the next thing I remember is him coming for me. He going to try to you on your tiny ground fast drop, and then with a great boss, you to try to plat drop. So I pulled my knees up, my legs, he hit, he hit my legs with his boss, and I mean that force, he just split my legs open, and he just jackknifed me, and he just carried on squashing me, you know. And, and I thought, well, my back's going to break, you know. And I heard it's like someone kicking their knuckle, you know, like a zip, you know, going everything crunchy. And I remember his boss coming down at me. Instinctively, just putting my hands up like this. And he stood back and I realized I'm not dead. There was a decision, you know, I, I, I don't want to die. So there was a, a log next to me and I thought, well, the only way that I can survive this is now is to get next to that log so that he doesn't have full control of my body. And as I rolled to it, he must have swiped again and didn't hook, hook me, but he hit me. And, and he spun me around 180 degrees. The next thing I remember, you know, I was, I was lying on my back looking up into his throat and his, his, his chin was on my, on my chest here. And I just remember all the blood and the, the smell, you know. Instantly I realized he's standing still and I thought, well, if I don't hold on to him now, he's gonna kill me. Instinctively, I just put my hands past the side of his face and I hooked my forearms in the loop of his horns. And I pulled myself up in here and I just held on. And he went mad. The strength that, that, that I got that day is not, it's superhuman strength. You don't hold on to a buffalo. My kid said to me, do you know that that's the same weight as the All Black Scrum? Suddenly he just collapsed on me and he wasn't dead. It was really rare that someone had such a good type of attack so, so early. He was a very good man, but the second thing is that Don himself is a really good man, so he could die in a pack of hands. I didn't know where my rifle was. I didn't see at that stage that he was lying on it. The whole attack took place in the size of a double cab bucky. And, and the fact that he was lying on my rifle is, is proof of that. It started there and ended there. And I saw Charles and Skulk. So I shouted them to get away and get the machine in the air. Um, I started the machine. Obviously the worth of the machine, we had to move that. So Skulk went forward with it, the other rifle and then Don put that all down. My R1 rifle was in the helicopter in its bag. And I looked up and I saw Skulk come running with it. I had to walk up to him and then walk around the side and I, and I managed to get a shot in. And it was instantaneously I felt, you know, I'm, I'm being badly hurt. I think the events would have taken, in my estimation, it's I think between two to three minutes from start to end. That's how quick it was. When I saw him walking towards us, I thought he had been gored through the stomach, through the abdomen. Uh, we just tried to keep him calm. Um, he then started to feel a lot of pain. We landed at the cricket field. The doctor then arrived, and then from there we got everyone again, went straight back to Medi Clinic in Mosbot. Took me straight into ICU, and my lungs were hemorrhaged, bruised, my liver was hemorrhaged, bladder was damaged, I had damage to my one um, vertebrate disc, and then the worst damage was three nerves had been damaged in here, one of which tore. I had three fractured ribs. Did he squash me that much? Or did he squash me that much to break the ribs? I don't know. But the cardiothoracic surgeon said that that pressure should have burst my lungs and my heart, and I should have been killed instantly. I said so it'll take about two and a half years to recover fully. I don't have any psychological effects off, you know, after effects. Maybe sometimes it takes something like this just to bring you back to earth and just bring you back to reality. And that buffalo bull that, that knocked me was only doing what it knows it wasn't doing anything wrong. It was injured and retaliating and defending itself. So, you know, you can't blame it for what it did or for what happened. In terms of waarde what people with unbelievable ondervinding in the field, and there was a lot of people in the field that were better than Don. So, 
Die uitkomst was nie baie goed vir die buffel nie. Maar die uitkomst was baie goed vir, vir Don gewees en natuurlijk ook die paarde wat hy bijdra tot bewaring in die Korea Nationale Park.